Hello world, welcome back to another episode, an update. Really, there's no rhyme or reason to the nonsense that I put out. Today, I'm gonna to tell you how I made my first $100 on Etsy, selling 3D printed products that I designed. Before I get into it, look, you gotta subscribe, you gotta like my stuff, and you gotta share it with your friends. If you don't have friends, you probably have a grandmother or somebody like that, just send the share. A lot of you out there are trying to develop your own electronics projects and maybe you're trying to design 3D printables, which is what I shifted into recently. I found 3D printables to be a more viable option, especially if you're trying to get your content out there, your products out there. More people are interested and the barrier to entry is much lower than if you're trying to get into electronics. People go to school for electronics and that's why it's not as popular. It's very difficult and it's very difficult to get your electronics out there and for people to want to purchase it. designing 3d prints is pretty much all i do all day every day i'm kind of obsessed with it there's a lot that goes into producing 3d printable products that people are willing to give you their money especially in this kind of downward spiraling economy so i want to tell you how i did it and i want to share with you this information because i made a lot of mistakes and that's the best way that you can learn from my experience is to avoid the things that I did wrong. So the first thing that I did right was I started creating my products and I got over that fear of people rejecting the stuff that I thought of. So I had these ideas. I had an idea for the Oculus Quest 2 slash Meta Quest uh, VR controllers and I made the holster. You've seen other videos and you can buy these you know they're available on my website or on etsy i've sold quite a few in the last week and a half and i'm pretty proud of this product it's a great product i think um it sounds great it just takes a little getting used to especially if you have the headset on but eventually you get that muscle memory in and you angle this and you put it in just like that you can also loosen up this uh, bolt here this little uh, hex nut screw and you can adjust the cant, which is the angle of this. So maybe you want it like that, so it's a little bit easier to set it in and uh, get it in there. That was trying to do that with the wrong hand. So anyway, it also comes with these uh, custom-themed VR stickers that I had developed. Uh, if you're familiar with Gorilla Tag, there's that one. Uh, this is what happens when you put your headset down in like Pavlov VR, you'll notice they're <laughs> they look like that. Be right back, okay? Collateral damage, that's a true story. I'll tell you about it someday. I was playing VR and I knew I should not have been playing in the room with the TV and then I broke the TV. So, bought a new TV. My favorite one, though, is this one called Battle Scars. Um, maybe you have an experience where you've broken a controller or you've banged up your hand pretty good. Uh, it gets pretty rough out there in the metaverse. Um, so another product that I really like that I developed and I had this idea was this vertebra. Okay, so you think vertebrae, right? In your backbone, vertebra, baby. This is a, uh, a flexible 3D printed thing and it has a narrower gate for the, the USB cable to come in. And if it's difficult, you just give it that little twist and then you can twist it back into spot. So it's sturdy, it's flexible. And then if you have quite a few of them, then you can put them onto your cords and then you can have, you know, a few of them. So it does look like, kind of like a, oops, it, could, it ends up kind of looking like a backbone. So that product is also selling on my website and on Etsy. Um, I got more orders uh, on my website than on Etsy for that one. And let me tell you, the one that I'm really disappointed is not selling, and I think I know why, is this Emoji Coaster set. This is my favorite product. It is by far the best looking, most ergonomic. It's giftable, and the cups sit perfectly on top. I made sure that they, they fit perfectly well on here. And I have non-slip pads on the bottoms of all of these. So you can push them around and they will not move. They will not move at all. So that's my favorite product. However, the problem is, I think I know why they're not selling. First of all, I'm not doing enough marketing and that's my biggest mistake. For all of these products, my favorite type of marketing that I've been doing 
is a basic TikTok style video. If you haven't moved to TikTok recently, I would suggest doing it. If you're worried about them spying on your data, almost every app that you have installed that you have allowed permissions to access your files, they are also collecting your metadata. Facebook has been doing it forever. Instagram is also in the same boat because they're the same company. All of these apps are taking your data and they're doing whatever the hell they want with it. So, you know, pick your poison, basically. TikTok is an incredible opportunity right now. A lot of people are shadow banned and not getting hardly any views on Instagram. I told you about this in my previous video. I get like two views on Instagram. Something has changed, something has happened. And I don't know if it's a bot wipe or something like that, but the tides are changing. So TikTok is like what YouTube used to be. It was more of a raw form of content. It's funnier. It's funnier and people are able to come across the content that they really tune into. And they haven't really wiped it yet, you know, from certain things that you're not allowed to talk about on YouTube. It's more of a fun type of thing. And the great thing about TikTok is you can get your product out there and you don't even have to show your face. You could just demonstrate the product and you're gonna get a wider audience possibly than you do on YouTube. Now, my YouTube uh, shorts do get views. However, they don't get conversions and that's the, the key thing that you want. When you're putting out these YouTube shorts or these reels or these Facebook videos, that's another thing I recommend is Facebook, not Instagram, but Facebook. It's all combining into Meta, so Right now, Facebook and TikTok are the best opportunities to get your stuff out there. Uh, and then I would say YouTube Shorts. However, YouTube Shorts is very finicky, whereas TikTok, um, I mean, you can promote your stuff, you can pay to promote your stuff. And uh, I don't know if, maybe YouTube has that, but I haven't tried it. There's just a lot of opportunity and I think a lot of people aren't aware of this and they're just putting their stuff on Etsy. So I put my stuff on Etsy and I got no sales. I got like one digital sale a while ago. And I was like, oh man, like I know what I have to do, but I don't want to do it because it's a lot of work. You have to set everything up, you record it, and then you're not satisfied with it. It doesn't look so good. And then you got to match it to music or whatever, and it's a pain in the ass. So my suggestion to you is to not worry about that so much. Just pick a basic format where you're showing off the product being used. And that's harder than it sounds because you want to make it look incredible. But I would suggest if I had to go back and this is what I'm going to be doing in the foreseeable future. Just make a basic video showcasing what it can do. You don't have to say anything. And you can make a separate account that's not your main account that just demonstrates all of your products. And people will go in there just like, an, like Instagram used to be. It's kind of like a showcase of all of your products in there. And that's what I would recommend. That's what I would do if I was starting over. Maybe I would make a separate account. Um, maybe under your business name or your LLC or whatever you're doing and have it there so people can go in and see, you know, it's a predictable form of content. And that's another thing that TikTok likes and, and I think a lot of these places like, and that's something that I don't do very well, is produce predictable content that people are gonna wanna tune into over and over and over again. They know what you're going to put out um, and then you surprise them and you make it in an entertaining way. Uh, I've never laughed as hard as I have once I got on TikTok recently in, in the last few months. And um, that for me, that's like my conversion processes. If something is entertaining to me and I see it as useful uh, informatively or, um, you know, it's, it, it's just something that I think can bring value to me, like it'll make my day better. That's the stuff that I actually follow. And that's how you can get, that's part of the conversion process. Now I am on my road to 1000 uh, uh, followers on TikTok. I have like 40 very special people and uh, I hope they're people. And I'm trying to get to a thousand, but I know what I've been doing. I, I, I've just been experimenting really. And um, like I just said, it really needs, you really need to put out that uh, if you're a comedy channel, just go in and just do like comedy stuff and you can tie in the stuff that you make into that comedy. That's what I'd recommend. You kind of blend the two together. You bridge the two together. You need to bridge your content. So if you have a product, bridge it with a, form of content and that's that that's what i'm not very good at because i'm doing a million things i'm doing a billion things at once right now uh you don't see it here right <laughs> but i'm doing a lot speaking of which here's an update of my most recent design this is a secret uh i'm doing a little r d put a community post tab oh shit how do you say it how do you do english 
a community tab post. By the way, YouTube, you have fumbled the ball on community tab posts. What are you doing? That is the greatest opportunity for you all to make some money. You don't have to shove ads in there, right? It's like, what are you guys doing? Come on. That's the best thing. That's like, that's like the people's front page news. They'll go into YouTube and then they should immediately pre be presented with the community post at the top of your page, at the top. Not all this, these, these ads that don't make sense. Put the community post at the top of the page as soon as the person gets in, if they're on desktop, if they're on mobile, figure out a way how to do that too. You know, like, like pepper them in. When I get into the app, sometimes I'll be shown, you know, community posts from people I subscribe to and they don't get a lot of interaction, even though they have tons of subscribers and tons of comments and a lot of good, you know, interaction um, and retention. Three hours later. This is what I'm working on. This is a, uh, <clears throat> well, what does it look like to you? Huh? Anybody familiar? Have you seen my recent content? Huh? Seen what I've been working on with my, uh, my horizontal retention clip idea, which works by the way, it's fantastic. Um, I do need to work out a few kinks, like uh, your hand can get caught on it, so I need to chamfer out some of the sides and kind of really perfect it. But it is solid and I have tested it. Pretty proud of that. Another major thing that I want to talk to you about that um, is really important and it's really key to getting success in selling your products now, we talked about this a lot when I was in uh, MBA school and even, you know, in college, uh, which are s quickly turning into the same thing. You don't need to go to school for this. I'm going to tell you real quick. You need to figure out who your target audience is. The problem is 99% of people, including myself, we have this idea of who should buy this product and who this product is for. The problem is you're going to figure out some way in that, in that process who your real target audience is. You're going to find out who's really willing to fork out that money who's really willing to pay some random person on the internet four to 24 dollars for a product they might not really need especially in this economy have you seen the price of eggs do you live in ohio i was trying to target the wrong audience i was looking for the 3d printing crowd now if you're targeting the 3d printing crowd you need to go where the 3d printing people are that's why i recommended cults3d.com in my last video first of all they have contests which is what this is related to. And you can, you know, win prizes. And it's really the more valuable thing other than, you know, cash prizes, which are fun. And and it's very smart that they do that. They, you know, they tell you that you have to make your, your product that you're uploading the digital file free. So that's a free library for them. It's very genius. However, the main value for you, what are you getting out of it? Look, the chances of you winning are slim, right? What you're getting out of that is you're getting challenged to push yourself to make a product that is going to wow people and possibly wow the judges of, you know, all of those people entering that contest. So that's why I really recommend getting on there and knowing ahead of time that you're going to produce free digital files, STL files for them to download and really what you're getting out of it is kind of a free self-taught education. You're going to have a hard time. You're going to be creating shapes and you're going to have failed prints and all that stuff. And what it is, is it's per, it's turning you into a more well-rounded designer and content creator because you have to make an attractive photo or video of it. I looked at some people's photos and I was doing photo and video and I was like, wow, that one photo is way better than what I, what I had. Their stuff is clean. They know like the angle, the lighting is good. It's really hard for me to grasp that kind of thing because that's just not the way my brain is currently wired. I found out that my target audience, right? Who's going to buy an emoji coaster set, right? It's going to be like moms, you know, people who are in the kitchen, people who want decorative pieces, uh, maybe a younger crowd who wants to give out some sort of, you know, easy, quick gift. But do the younger crowd use coasters? No, right? That's more of an older generational thing. So I immediately saw the problem with getting this sold. And it's it's a solid product. It takes quite a bit of material. It takes quite a bit of time to prep and make sure that everything's good. And, you know, put the non-slip pads on the back. And I think 
I need to figure out um, a, a better price point or maybe just uh, figure a, a different twist on the product to try and get it out to a, a different target audience. So you're gonna have to update your target audience throughout and you need to, I needed to get rid of any sort of stereotype or stigma like, you know, oh, TikTok, you know, that's not me, that's Gen Z, it's, you know, Chinese spy app. I said, you know what? This is, I'm, a, I'm all about money. So I need to put myself where my target audience is going to be for each individual product. And so far it's worked. You can make money very quickly if you're producing your best. I started updating some of the photos and videos and I looked at the descriptions. One of my descriptions was completely wrong. It was like a copy paste of a digital one and I put it on the physical one for the holsters. And I was like, oh my goodness, like, <laughs> why did I do that? I don't know. I was up late one night and maybe I copy pasted the wrong thing. I have no idea. So these are my recommendations for you. If you're looking to make your hundred dollars, your first hundred dollars on any site, if it's your own site, you're going to have a lot of trouble getting people to find your site. You're going to have a lot of trouble getting people to trust your site to, uh, you know, put their credit card information. Even if you have like a third party doing everything for you that, you know, people don't see that they see your website, it's you. And then they think it's you handling the transaction. So I would suggest getting on one of these, um, craft sites, like, uh, I don't know what they are. Was it gum road and Zazzle and Etsy, anything like that, where you can easily, uh, have your stuff sold. Now, uh, there is another step. 3d printing is not the end all be all of creating products you can create them out of anything really i just really like the the process that the machine does for me it's made it really simple and quick for me to prototype stuff and get it out in a you know a presentable manner i think people are willing to fork out cash for you know stuff that's functional and looks decent but in the future i do want to go down the injection molding route i've talked about that in my previous video and i think you should also consider that and um, you don't have to do 3d printing you could do woodworking you could do cnc machining it depends on the material that you're trying to send out and what makes sense for you um you know cost wise because this does have a cost to it and you know you have electricity and you have machine maintenance and and parts that you need to swap out and time you have to <laughs> you have to spend a lot of time calibrating machines and getting them to work even if you're just using a cricket machine you're going to have to calibrate that thing and, and troubleshoot it it's going to give you problems and that's just how it is that's how machines are so that's my advice to you if you're looking to make your first hundred dollars on etsy or other places especially with 3d printed products um keep it simple um keep it fun design things that you just have ideas for if you don't have ideas start looking around like i always suggest look around and if you're like man i wish that existed or oh hey this type of shape could go here and do this type of job this could block this this can help with this you're going to learn a lot if you start using your brain and they don't teach you that in school it's like they don't even teach math and that's why i have a multiplication chart right next to me yeah Stay positive, stay excited. Uh, I'll have an article on my website, uh, roboticsforbeginners.com. I know it's a terrible name. I don't make robotics yet, but this is all the journey leading up to that. Uh, 3D printing is just an avenue I had to go down uh, for a while and I'm in love with it and it's going to help produce. And I'm learning a lot about mechanics and materials and stuff that, you know, go together in order to someday make something a little bit better than four wheels and a camera. So that's all I have for you today. I'm gonna head out to the range. It's a beautiful day. I plan on producing more content. I know I don't produce a lot of predictable content and I'm really trying to figure that out. Look, this was a lot of work, okay? Getting this, my desk is a mess, all right? I don't have like a separate work desk, surprisingly. I don't have a lot of room to work in. This is, this is all the room I have to film, okay? I don't have like Funko Pops behind me and Star Wars toys, all right? I'm not one of those dudes. I got um, <clears throat> other stuff. I'll be updating you on this specifically because I want to show you kind of the process. I don't really want to bore you with, you know, this is how I drew this line and this is how I drew that line. I do want to describe the process that I'm going through and the journey to get this thing to work. If I can get this to work, this is going to be a huge, huge milestone in my personal journey in designing 
3 d material products you know and it, and it does relate to robotics so chill out okay just bear with me there is one tool that i highly recommend if you're going to be designing any sort of three-dimensional products like with 3d printing cnc routing anything like that uh, where you need specific measurements this is something that i use every single day multiple times a day and it is of course your basic cheap calipers you don't necessarily need the digital thing it runs out of battery all the time and i don't trust what the digital readout has you can get the same one it's cheap but you really just need a decent pair of analog calipers i wish i had a plastic one because these are very sharp and that some people are very sticklers you know for the type of materials that are used in these calipers but what it does is it allows you to reverse engineer things like when i was creating my holsters i needed to get exact measurements of how wide certain things were so that i could make my designs and save myself a lot of headache that way so i highly recommend you get a, a pair of cheap calipers to get started um, and then you can go from there so i always have uh, these on me and the good thing about the metal kind is that if you have a magnet on your desk it Takes care of itself. Okay, and then when you need it you pull it off And you put it back Who would have thought magnets? How do they work? Go ahead and take a look at the description I'll have a link for the cheap calipers that I use. There's a lot of channels and I'm not a 3d printing channel I'm just more of a journey uh, is kind of what I am. So if you want to subscribe to the journey, okay, that is Kimchi Robotics, uh, do it right now, okay? There is no tomorrow, there's just now. So go ahead and subscribe, share, like this. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Stay grounded. <laughs>